One consequence of being in the brain assessment business is that you think a lot about brain development and you think a lot about things that promote brain development. And so when I came across this Montessori thing, it was like, oh, wow, you know, this makes sense. I, I've done research on children and families living in poverty, and um, I've thought a lot about what, you know, is beneficial for these kids. There's an awful lot that they are unable to provide for the children by way of model, example, um, positive interactive behavior, stuff like that. It's immensely stressful to be poor, and for that reason, poor parents um, have a, a harder time being the kind of sort of developmental parents that they'd like to be. Now, what Dr. Lillard's research showed, and showed um, quite persuasively, and again, the findings are remarkable, is that poor children who attended Montessori schools ended up being significantly, significantly like the children who were sort of typical middle class type kids. I think that's an important finding, and uh, it says something about the role that Montessori education can be in, uh, especially for children from disadvantaged backgrounds. It's the great equalizer. Uh, I know um, I've, I've met and have done my professional work with um, hundreds, probably hundreds of families that are poor. And you get to understand you know, what, what the problems are for them when it comes to creating an educational or creating a developmental environment in the home. What the Montessori environments gives all children living in poverty is a nice taste of a peaceful place that makes sense, that um, is guided by a teacher who is wise and smart and understands children and has a, a tremendous training and observation of children and really is, is going to be able to pick on that kid's signs to get a sense about what they might need that day. So what you're asking is, uh, why will doing this training center and lab school in this community to serve these children who are living in poverty, well, how can we be sure this is going to work? I think a better question is, how can you possibly expect poor children to all be at the same level in a conventional classroom? And in fact, they're not. You know, and the consequence of that is, is that it's a soul-destroying experience. You know, education fails for poor children really quickly, very early on, uh, because there is this sort of expectation that everyone's at the same level and is learning the same material at the same time. You know, they, that, that can't be possible. That's not possible. Montessori education can do that, and it does it routinely. It does it without even trying. I don't think that people really grasp just how personal and individualized the Montessori approach to education is. And if they have an inkling of it, they, they don't really believe that it can be that individualized, that everybody can, every child in a classroom, up to 30 kids in a classroom, can be sort of on their own little individual developmental track. But it's absolutely true. And so if children are from privileged backgrounds and have all the advantages of the family that they come from, uh, Montessori education can meet them where they are. If they have uh, extremely um, disadvantaged backgrounds and, you know, have, you know, whatever lack of any early educational opportunity they might have had, it's actually more important for them than it would be for children from more privileged backgrounds. Uh, the materials and the method can meet them literally wherever they are. If we want to raise well-socialized, um, good citizens, um, children who um, are able to sort of size up situations and figure out what needs to be done, and then have this sort of personal gumption to do it, you know, to solve problems and to address the needs of the world, I don't think there's any other approach to education. I don't think there's anything that we can do for children that will better equip them for that sort of approach to life, the Montessori education.